And now, another first from Nelson Paid Multimedia. Introduction to Aquaponics. Aquaponics is the combination of recirculating aquaculture and hydroponics. Recirculating aquaculture is an intensive method of fish farming in which fish are densely stocked in tanks. The water in the tanks quickly becomes fouled as the fish eat and digest their food and excrete waste. Highly efficient filtration systems are used to remove the nutrient-rich fish waste and maintain acceptable water quality. Hydroponics is an efficient method of farming that uses soilless growing systems to grow many types of plant crops. The plants are fed a solution of water and all of the essential nutrients. This precise blend is fed directly to the plant roots, allowing the plant to develop faster, healthier, and with less labor for the farmer. In aquaponics, the fish waste provides a food source for the growing plants, and the plants provide a natural filter for the water the fish live in. This creates a mini ecosystem where both plants and fish can thrive. Aquaponics is the ideal answer to a fish farmer's problem of disposing of nutrient-rich water and a hydroponic grower's need for nutrient-rich water. The key to a successful aquaponic system is a healthy colony of beneficial bacteria. These bacteria convert ammonia and nitrite into nitrate, which is used by the plants as they grow. Without the bacteria, ammonia and nitrite levels, which are toxic to fish and plants, would quickly rise. Aquaponics, aquaculture, and hydroponics can all be used to produce large quantities of food in very small spaces in an environmentally friendly way. The combination of aquaculture and hydroponics is quite new, and the potential for using aquaponics to grow high-quality food around the world is tremendous. Here are some of the many advantages of aquaponic food production. Aquaponics utilizes the nutrient-rich water from aquaculture that otherwise would have been a waste product or would need to be filtered in a more costly manner. Aquaponics eliminates the cost and time involved with mixing traditional hydroponic nutrients. Aquaponics provides a truly organic, natural form of nutrients for the plants. By eliminating the soil in vegetable production, you eliminate all soil-borne disease. Aquaponics uses a fraction of the water that traditional field production does because no water is wasted or consumed by weeds. In aquaponics, plant spacing can be very intensive, allowing you to grow more plants in a given space. With high stocking densities in a fish tank, plants will quickly grow and develop in an aquaponic system. In aquaponics, there cannot be any pesticides or herbicides used, making the end product healthier and safer. If your climate permits, or if you're growing in a greenhouse, you can grow crops in an aquaponic system year-round. The technology of combining hydroponics and aquaculture is very new, and although it is a fantastic method of producing food crops in a recirculating system, there are some problems inherent to combining these two technologies. Combining two hybrid systems increases the potential for problems. Available nutrients are dependent on the number of fish, the size of the fish, and the amount they are fed. The combination of nutrient-rich water and sunlight creates algae, which can clog pipes and drains. Fish are very sensitive to pesticides, cleaning agents, and chemicals, so the only practical method of pest management is by using barriers and biological controls. This is an advantage as well because many consumers want pesticide-free produce. There is a compromise in pH. Most fish do best at a pH of 7.5 to 8.0, but most plants do best at a pH of 6.0 to 6.5, and the nitrifying bacteria do best at 7.0. The compromise for optimal production in aquaponics is 7.0, neutral. Fortunately, as research continues and more commercial operations are established, these issues should be reduced or eliminated.
Traditionally, aquaculture was done in large ponds, but in the last 25 years, much research and progress has been made in recirculating aquaculture systems. The great benefit of recirculating systems is that you can grow up to three quarters of a pound of fish per gallon of water. This means that large quantities of fish can be grown in a fraction of the space and water traditionally dedicated to aquaculture. The disadvantage of highly concentrated populations of fish is the large volume of wastewater that accumulates daily. Early on in the research of recirculating aquaculture systems, experiments were done to determine the efficiency of aquatic plants in consuming the nutrients in this wastewater, therefore helping to purify the water for the fish in the system. As research continued, terrestrial plants were tested and proven to be an effective means of water purification for aquaculture, and this nutrient-rich water a nearly ideal hydroponic solution for growing plants. Lettuce, chives, and other leafy crops were first considered for aquaponics, but more recently, commercial growers and researchers have had great success with tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, melons, flowers, and many other crops. Aquaponics is a versatile technology that can be used to grow fish and plants on a commercial scale, as the subject of research, as a tool for hands-on education, as a source for home food production, and as a fun and interesting hobby. Commercially, aquaponics is in its infancy, but as the technology develops and is refined, it has the potential to be a more efficient and space-saving method of growing fish, vegetables, and herbs. Although there are currently a limited number of commercial aquaponic operations, many people are expressing a strong interest in this intensive method of growing food. Research on aquaponics has been going on since the mid-1970s and continues today. Most notably, the Agricultural Experiment Station at the University of the Virgin Islands, St. Croix, has earned worldwide recognition for over 20-plus years of work in refining commercial aquaponic systems. Other institutions where research on aquaponics has taken place include the Environmental Research Lab at the University of Arizona in Tucson, Oregon State University, Southern Illinois University, Auburn University, North Carolina State University, University of Washington, Texas A&M University, plus NASA, the New Alchemy Institute, the Rodale Institute, the World Aquaculture Society, and the American Society of Agricultural Engineers. New installations of aquaponic systems demonstrate that the interest in aquaponics is rising and educational institutions are eager to continue research. The Crop Diversification Center in Alberta, Canada has just completed the installation of a large aquaponic system and another, run by scientists from Rutgers University, was recently established at the Burlington County Research and Demonstration Greenhouse in New Jersey. Aquaponics is an excellent means of growing food for anyone interested in fresh, pesticide-free vegetables and fish for their family. An aquaponic system can be set up in a small greenhouse, garage, basement, or backyard. Students of all ages can learn from an aquaponic system in which plants and fish live in a recirculating aquatic environment. A small aquaponic system can be set up in any classroom to encourage individual responsibility while demonstrating the principles of the nitrification cycle, plant usage of nutrients, pH relationships, botany, biology, chemistry, agriculture, and business. In addition to classroom setups, an aquaponic system makes an ideal science or agricultural project for students. The monitoring and care of an aquaponic system by students inspires responsibility and creates excitement in the learning environment. A unit on aquaponics can be started at the beginning of a semester and run through the entire semester, allowing the educator to present the individual concepts and lessons as the plants and fish develop and grow. On a hobby scale, aquaponics is catching on quickly. A home aquarium with ornamental or food fish can be combined with a mini garden growing herbs, vegetables, and flowers. A hobby system can be a beautiful showpiece and a food production system all in one. Before covering specific system designs, we'll introduce the components that make up an aquaponic system. Not all components listed are used in every design. The size and type of fish tank you choose will be determined by your application. 
A small system for hobby or education might utilize a glass or plexiglass aquarium. Small demonstration systems can even be made from plastic tubs or barrels. A larger system used for home food production or commercial aquaponics generally uses manufactured polyethylene or fiberglass tanks. These tanks can range in size from a few hundred to a few thousand gallons. Whatever your application, choose a tank that is sturdy, durable, and designed to hold the volume of water you need. Keep in mind that if you plan on raising food in your system, you should use food-grade plastics and materials. The grow bed is the space dedicated to growing plants in an aquaponic system. Some grow beds are filled with a media such as gravel, perlite, sand, or water, while other systems do not use a media. You'll learn more about these designs later. The biofilter provides habitat for the beneficial bacteria. A common design is a canister that contains a porous media. The water from the fish tank flows through the biofilter where bacteria, which have attached to the media, convert ammonia to nitrite and nitrate. The larger the surface area, the more space you have for a healthy bacteria colony. In many aquaponic system designs, the grow bed serves as the biofilter. A water pump is used to circulate the water throughout the aquaponic system. In some designs, water constantly circulates. In others, the water flows periodically. In small systems, the pump is usually located within the fish tank. In larger systems, the pump is located in a separate holding container or return tank. Aeration is required in all aquaponic systems. An air compressor or blower is used to keep the dissolved oxygen levels high enough for both the fish and the plants. This air is channeled through tubing to air stones, which break the stream of bubbles into microbubbles, providing maximum aeration to the water. In some very densely stocked recirculating aquaculture and aquaponic systems, pure oxygen is added to the water to maintain adequate oxygen levels. A clarifier or solids filter is used to separate the solid waste from the water stream. In a clarifier, the solids settle to the bottom of the basin and are then removed on a periodic basis. In a drum or screen filter, the solids are continuously removed from the system. PVC pipe, tubing, and connectors are required to move the water and connect components. A water heater or chiller is used to maintain proper water temperature. The temperature at which you maintain your system will depend on the species of fish and plants you are growing. In some cases, lights are used to increase light for plant growth. Artificial lighting is covered in detail in the Environmental Control section of the Introduction to Aquaponics DVD. All of the equipment in an aquaponic system must be operational and run as needed. In the event of a power outage or equipment failure, you must be prepared ahead of time or you risk losing your plants and fish. For small systems, a battery backup will likely be adequate for supplemental power in an outage. For anyone with a system for home food production or larger, a generator is essential to ensure consistent power. It is also a good idea to have a replacement on hand for key components of your system, such as your water pump and air blower. Aquaponics can be practiced outdoors or, if the natural environment isn't compatible with your crops, indoors or in a greenhouse. Additional equipment which could be needed to provide the proper environmental conditions includes air heaters, cooling, and humidification devices. Greenhouses and environmental control are covered in detail in the environmental control section of the Introduction to Aquaponics DVD. Two basic concepts are emerging in aquaponics system design. One, which we'll call liquid waste aquaponics, separates the solid waste from the system using only the liquids. The other method, which we'll call total waste aquaponics, uses all of the fish waste, including the solids. In a liquid waste system, the solids are removed using a clarifier or solids filter and can then be applied to soil crops providing valuable nutrients to those plants. This method is used in float and NFT systems, which you'll learn about later. The advantages of a liquid waste system include a cleaner system and the use of the solid waste as a fertilizer for soil crops. In a total waste system, all of the waste-laden water from the fish tank is pumped directly into the grow bed, which is filled with some type of media such as gravel, sand, or perlite. 
The advantage of this system is that it eliminates the need to dispose of or utilize the solids in another way. The disadvantage is that the solids tend to clog the grow bed and plumbing, creating more labor for the farmer. With the increased awareness and interest in aquaponics, a few companies are now offering manufactured systems specifically designed for aquaponics. Up until recently, if you wanted to have a commercial or backyard aquaponics system, you had to build it. Since there are currently only a few ready-made systems on the market, it is likely that creative individuals will be hard at work designing and building other systems. It is these individuals, along with researchers and manufacturers, that will be refining aquaponic technology in the decade to come. The media filled bed system, the float system, and the NFT, or nutrient film technique, are each variations of traditional hydroponic methods. When combined with a fish tank or tanks, each design can be applied in any application of aquaponics. The media filled bed is a total waste system. All of the water and sludge in the tank is periodically pumped into the media filled grow bed. The grow bed becomes the biofilter and, over time, the solids break down into elements the plants need. Medias that are often used include gravel, perlite, sand, or expanded clay pebbles. The grow bed which holds the media can be a manufactured shallow tub or tank, or a frame made out of wood or plastic that is lined with an aquaculture grade liner. In this system, the grow bed is home to both the bacteria and the plants you are growing. The media filled bed system uses a fish tank, a separate container filled with media for the grow bed, a pump and possibly a sump, and aeration in the fish tank. Popularized by SNS Aquafarm of West Plains, Missouri, the media filled bed design is often used by individuals who desire complete usage of the fish waste. This design is commonly used for home food production and small commercial systems. Over 800 years ago, the Aztecs built food-producing rafts, which floated on lakes and ponds. The modern-day float system uses this centuries-old concept to grow fish and plants in a recirculating system. The Agricultural Experiment Station at the University of the Virgin Islands has developed a commercially viable float aquaponic system. In a float system, plants are grown on a foam board that floats on the top of the water. Holes are cut into the float and plants are set in each hole with the roots dangling into the water below. In hobby systems, the float board is often placed on the top of the fish tank like we see in this 500 gallon system. In large commercial systems like the one developed at the University of the Virgin Islands, the raft is floating on a separate but connected body of water and the water circulates throughout the system at all times. This extra volume of water increases the production of fish and also serves as the biofilter. In a float system, you have a tank for the fish, the grow bed which is filled with water, the board floating on top of the water, a clarifier used to remove the solids, a water pump to circulate the water, aeration of the water in the fish tanks and in the grow bed. In the UVI system, a separate tank filled with bird netting is used to collect very fine solids which were not removed by the clarifier. These fine solids slowly break down, providing additional nutrients for the plants. NFT, the nutrient film technique, is a common method of hydroponics and, more recently, aquaponics. In an NFT system, the plants are placed in gullies or channels in which a thin film of water flows past the roots. In aquaponic NFT, the solids are usually removed to prevent clogging the plumbing in channels and a separate biofilter is required. NFT channels or gullies are widely available from hydroponic equipment suppliers. NFT aquaponic systems are suitable for any applications of aquaponics from hobby to commercial. The biggest question in aquaponics is how many plants can I grow if I have a certain number of fish? There is not a simple answer to this question, but there are some general guidelines. First, the number of plants you can grow is not just based on the number of fish or the size of those fish. The biggest determining factor is the amount of food added to the system. 
Plus, the equation varies depending on your application and the design and size of the system. In media filled bed systems, there is a general formula for every one cubic foot of water in the fish tank, you can accommodate two cubic feet of grow bed. This one to two formula also works for small hobby systems or desktop systems. A formula for float systems has been determined by the scientists at the University of the Virgin Islands. It takes 57 grams of feed to support one square meter of lettuce in a float system. Given that you generally feed about 2% of total fish body weight per day, you can calculate the size of the float bed you can support. An aquaponic system isn't difficult to maintain, but there are periodic tasks that must be done to ensure a healthy system. The availability of dry, species-specific fish food is quite new and is the result of the rapidly growing aquaculture industry. Today's specialized fish feeds provide precise amounts of protein, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, and minerals. In a hobby or ornamental system, it is fine to feed your fish only once a day. If food production is your goal, you'll want to maximize your efforts and feed more frequently. Feeding by hand gives you the opportunity to observe the fish and their feeding habits. Many commercial growers will feed every couple of hours using a timed mechanical feeder or use an on-demand feeder so the fish can eat whenever they are hungry. Every day you should visually inspect the fish and the system. Make sure the water is flowing properly, the aeration system is working and the drains are free of debris. Watch to see that the fish eat vigorously and swim normally. Look for problems such as fungus, open sores, torn fins, or discoloration, and check the temperature and pH of the water. Additionally, other water quality factors should be checked at least every week. These include ammonia nitrogen, nitrite nitrogen, and dissolved oxygen. In a home food production system, you will most likely harvest fish as you want them once they've matured. Commercial operations will harvest based on market demand and production.